Jamaica 2020 Human Rights Report Executive Summary Jamaica is a constitutional parliamentary democracy. In national elections on September 3, the Jamaica Labour Party, led by Prime Minister Andrew Michael Holness, won 48 of the 63 seats in the House of Representatives. International and local election observers deemed the elections transparent, free, fair, and generally peaceful. The Ministry of National Security is the bureaucratic home of the Jamaica Defence Force and directs policy over the security forces. The Prime Minister has authority over the Jamaican Defence Board and as Chairman of the Board has responsibility for defence-related matters including command, discipline, and administration. He is the de facto Minister of Defence. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is the country's police force. It has primary responsibility for internal security and has units for community policing, special response, intelligence gathering, and internal affairs. When the Prime Minister and Parliament declare a state of emergency, the Jamaica Defence Force has arrest authority and operational partnership alongside the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The Passport, Immigration, and Citizenship Agency has responsibility for migration. Civilian authorities maintained effective control over the security forces. Members of the security forces committed some abuses. Significant human rights issues included numerous reports of unlawful and arbitrary killings by government security forces, harsh and life-threatening conditions in prisons and detention facilities, arbitrary arrest and detention, serious corruption by officials, lack of accountability for violence against women, and sex and labor trafficking. The law criminalizes consensual same-sex sexual conduct between men, but the government did not enforce the law during the year. The government took some steps to investigate and prosecute officials who committed human rights abuses. Nonetheless, there were credible reports that some officials alleged to have committed human rights abuses were not subject to full and swift accountability. Section 1. Respect for the integrity of the person, including freedom from a. Arbitrary deprivation of life and other unlawful or politically motivated killings. Jamaica 2. Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. There were numerous reports during the year that government security forces committed arbitrary and unlawful killings, and there were hundreds of abuse and wrongful harm complaints. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, was cited in the majority of the reports, both independently and as part of joint military police activity, although there were several reported incidents involving the Jamaica Defence Force. Overall, the total number of fatalities involving security forces, justifiable or otherwise, increased, with 83 reports as of September 29, compared with 67 by the same date in 2019. Charge against members of the security forces took years to process, primarily due to investigatory backlogs, trial delays, and appellate measures. For example, although first brought before the court in 2014, Constables Garrett Davis and Christabel Smith of the disbanded JCF Mobile Reserve Unit were not convicted until late 2019 and not sentenced until January. Constable Davis was sentenced to life in prison while Constable Smith was sentenced to more than six years' imprisonment for the shooting and killing of Omar Marshall in 2009. The court concluded that Davis and Smith planted firearms and prepared statements to deceive the public as part of a process to kill persons accused of being criminals. Numerous other cases, particularly the Clarendon Death Squad trial, awaited prosecution. B. Disappearance there were no reports of disappearances by or on behalf of government authorities. C. Torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. The Constitution prohibits such practices, although there is no definition of torture in the law. There were allegations of cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment or punishment of individuals in police custody. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, 
investigated reports of alleged abuse committed by police and prison officials. The majority of reports to Indicom described excessive physical force and restraint, intimidation, and restricted access to medical treatment. Representatives of non-governmental organizations, NGOs, expressed concern regarding underreporting by victims, particularly among the vulnerable or persons with mental disabilities. Jamaica 3. Country reports on human rights practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. These concerns were highlighted by the case of Noel Chambers an 81-year-old inmate with mental disabilities who died on January 27 at Tower Street Adult Correctional Center under inhuman conditions after serving 40 years in prison without trial. Reports showed that at the time of death, his clothing was filthy and his body was emaciated. Further, he was found to be covered in vermin bites, live bedbugs, and bed sores. Chambers, originally incarcerated in 1980, was being held under the court's authority having been deemed unfit to plead to a murder charge. Rapes were occasionally perpetrated by security forces. In July, Correctional Officer Gavin Winter was arrested and charged with rape after he reportedly sexually assaulted a woman at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center in Kingston. As of October the case had not been tried. Indicom investigated actions by members of the security forces and other agents of the state that resulted in death, injury, or the abuse of civil rights. When appropriate, Indicom forwarded cases to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions for agents to make an arrest. Indicom remained one of the few external and independent oversight commissions that monitored security forces, but reported it was unable to investigate each case thoroughly due to manpower limitations and significant delays by police in conducting identification parades of suspects. De facto impunity for security forces was a problem since cases against officers were infrequently recommended for criminal trial or saw substantial procedural delays. Many cases, such as that of Camosa Clark, a man with a mental disability who died in custody after being beaten into a coma, did not go to trial due to continued delays in court and plea hearings. These problems were exacerbated by a Privy Council ruling in May that Indicom does not have the power to arrest, charge, or prosecute. The government did not take sufficient action to address abuse and unlawful killings by security forces. The government has mechanisms to investigate and punish abuse, but they were not always employed. Fewer than 10% of the investigations of abuse resulted in recommendations for disciplinary action or criminal charges, and fewer than 2% of the investigations led to a conviction. Prison and Detention Center Conditions Jamaica 4 Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor Conditions in prisons and detention facilities were harsh and life-threatening due to gross overcrowding, physical abuse, limited food, poor sanitary conditions, inadequate medical care, and poor administration. Physical conditions, correctional facilities were significantly overcrowded. At times cells in the maximum security facility at Tower Street held 200% of the intended capacity. Cells were very dark and dirty with poor bathroom and toilet facilities and limited ventilation. There were reports of prisoner-on-prisoner -prisoner violence, including the June assault on a prisoner with a mental disability by another inmate at the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center. The assailant was one of numerous patients with mental disabilities transferred from Tower Street Adult Correctional Center after the death there of Noel Chambers. Prisoners sometimes did not receive required medication, including medication for HIV, according to UNAIDS. The HIV prevalence rate among incarcerated populations, more than 6.9%, was reportedly as much as three times that of the general population. For part-time psychiatrists cared for at least 313 inmates diagnosed as persons with mental disabilities in 11 facilities across the island. Administration independent authorities investigated allegations of abuse and inhuman conditions. 
investigations were infrequent, and the number of official complaints likely underrepresented the number of problems. Notably, official reports did not indicate signs of malnourishment in the case of Noel Chambers despite clear post-mortem evidence. Independent monitoring, justices of the peace and representatives from the Police Civilian Oversight Authority, PCOA, visited correctional centers and lockups regularly. Justices of the peace reported their findings to the Ministry of Justice, while the PCOA submitted reports to the Ministry of National Security. Both entities made recommendations to improve overall conditions. Citizen groups and NGOs believed the ministries rarely acted upon the recommendations. D. Arbitrary arrest or detention. The Constitution prohibits arbitrary arrest and detention but allows arrest if there is reasonable suspicion of a person having committed or about to commit a criminal offence. The law provides for the right of any person to challenge in court the lawfulness of his or her arrest or detention, and the government generally observed these requirements. Abuses arose, however, because police regularly ignored the reasonable suspicion requirement, arraignment procedures were very. Jamaica 5. Country reports on human. Country report. Jamaica 5. The Constitution prohibits. D. Arbitrary arrest or detention. Independent monitoring, just administration, prisoners sometimes did not receive re physical conditions, correctional facilities were significantly overcrowded. At times cells in the maximum security facility at Tower Street held 200% of the intended capacity. Cells were very dark and dirty with poor bathroom and toilet facilities and limited ventilation. There were reports of prisoner-on-prisoner -prisoner violence, including the June assault on a prisoner with a mental disability by another inmate at the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center. The assailant was one of numerous patients with mental disabilities transferred from Tower Street Adult Correctional Center after the death there of Noel Chambers. Prisoners sometimes did not receive required medication, including medication for HIV, according to UNAIDS. The HIV prevalence rate among incarcerated populations, more than 6.9%, was reportedly as much as three times that of the general population. For part-time psychiatrists cared for at least 313 inmates diagnosed as persons with mental disabilities in 11 facilities across the island. Administration Independent authorities investigated allegations of abuse and inhuman conditions. Investigations were infrequent, and the number of official complaints likely underrepresented the number of problems. Notably, official reports did not indicate signs of malnourishment in the case of Noel Chambers despite clear post mortem evidence. Independent monitoring, justices of the peace and representatives from the Police Civilian Oversight Authority, PCOA, visited correctional centers and lockups regularly. Justices of the peace reported their findings to the Ministry of Justice, while the PCOA submitted reports to the Ministry of National Security. Both entities made recommendations to improve overall conditions. Citizen groups and NGOs believed the ministries rarely acted upon the recommendations. D. Arbitrary arrest or detention. The Constitution prohibits arbitrary arrest and detention but allows arrest if there is reasonable suspicion of a person having committed or about to commit a criminal offence. The law provides for the right of any person to challenge in court the lawfulness of his or her arrest or detention, and the government generally observed these requirements. Abuses arose, however, because police regularly ignored the reasonable suspicion requirement, arraignment procedures were very Jamaica 5. Country reports on human rights practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. Slow and large portions of the country operated under a public state of emergency, SOE, for most of the year. The country suffered from high levels of homicide, crime, and violence. The declaration of an SOE grants the police and military the ability to search, seize, and arrest citizens without a warrant. The Prime Minister may declare an SOE for 14 days or less, 
extensions require parliamentary approval. Additionally, the government may identify zones of special operations, ZOSOs, which confer to security forces the same authorities as in SOs, albeit within much smaller physical boundaries. During the year the Prime Minister declared or extended eight such zones, although all were allowed to expire in time for national elections. The government views SOs and ZOSOs as necessary to reduce crime and violence in areas with high crime and violence. Combined, these areas included more than 50% of the population. Arbitrary and lengthy detentions took place in ZOSOs and SOs. High detention rates continue to be a concern. Extremely few of these. Arrests resulted in charges. Arrest procedures and treatment of detainees. Police officers may arrest without a warrant when a felony, treason, or breach of the peace is committed or attempted in the officer's presence. Following an arrest, the officer is required to tell the suspect in clear language the offences for which the individual was arrested. An officer may execute a warrant that is lawfully issued by a judge or justice of the peace without being in possession of the warrant. The officer must produce the warrant as soon as practical after the arrest if the suspect requests it. The decision to charge or release must be made within 48 hours, although a judge or justice of the peace may extend the period of custody. Security forces did not always follow these official procedures. According to government officials and civil society, the public perception was that police could make arrests regardless of judicial authorization. There were reports of arrests and prolonged periods of detention in which police did not inform the suspect of the official charges. There were multiple reports that detainees did not have access to legal counsel and that apprehended suspects could not notify family members. NGOs estimated that 90% of all arrests occurred without a warrant. Every person charged with an offence was entitled to consideration for bail, although those charged with murder, treason, or other crimes punishable by imprisonment could be denied bail on substantial grounds of belief that they would fail to surrender to authorities or would commit another. Jamaica 6 Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor Offense while on bail A police officer could simultaneously arrest and deny bail. The procedure lent itself to low-level corruption in which a police constable would accept bribes in lieu of an arrest. Arbitrary arrest, most cases of arbitrary detention were in the parishes of SD. James and St. Catherine. The government declared an SOE in these areas because of high levels of criminal and gang violence. The government deployed the military there to support local law enforcement authorities. Under these orders security forces carried out a wide-ranging campaign of detention and incarceration in an attempt to contain violence. There were few official investigations or prosecutions of security force members involved in arbitrary arrests. Pre-trial detention, lockups are intended for short-term detentions of 48 hours or less, but often the government held suspects in these facilities without charge or awaiting trial for much longer periods. A lack of administrative follow-through after an arrest created situations where persons were incarcerated without any accompanying paperwork. In some cases, days, weeks, months, or years later, authorities could not ascertain why someone was arrested. NGOs estimated hundreds of detainees endured such treatment between 2018 and the end of the year, including the particularly egregious case of Gavin Noble, who was held at the Negro police station for 458 days without trial before the Supreme Court declared his detention unconstitutional in a September ruling. E. Denial of fair public trial The Constitution provides for an independent judiciary and the government generally respected judicial independence and impartiality. An extreme backlog of criminal cases, however, continued to lead to the denial of a fair public trial for thousands of citizens. Delays were often due to procedural requirements, although the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions sought plea bargains and settlements to expedite certain cases. 
reports indicated that the government needed to manage better the timely placement of new documents into the legal record system and to schedule hearings more effectively. Criminal proceedings sometimes extended for years. The Supreme Court reported the legal system failed to convict in approximately 7% fewer murder cases than in the previous year, with conviction rates as low as 22% in the court's first quarter. During the year courts continued their efforts to address the case backlog by developing parish justice centers, promoting Jamaica 7 Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor Alternative Dispute Resolution Methods, and Closely Monitoring Case Throughput to the Ministry of Justice Trial Procedures The Constitution provides for the right to a fair and public trial, and an independent judiciary generally enforced this right. The law provides defendants a presumption of innocence. Defendants have the right to be informed of the charges against them and the right to a trial within a reasonable time. Defendants have the right to be present at their trial. They have the right to counsel. Legal aid attorneys, public defenders, were available to indigents, except to those charged with money laundering, drug manufacturing, drug trafficking, possession of large quantities of drugs, or any offence not punishable with imprisonment. Limited legal aid attorneys, duty counsels, were also available to everyone, regardless of charges, from when persons were taken into custody up to their first appearance in court. Defendants have ample time and facilities to prepare their defence. The government provides the free assistance of an interpreter as necessary. Defendants have the right to confront witnesses they may not be compelled to testify or confess guilt. They have the right to appeal. The Supreme Court tries serious criminal offences, which include all murder cases. Political prisoners and detainees There were no reports of political prisoners or detainees. Civil judicial procedures and remedies there is an independent and impartial civil judiciary process. Complainants may bring human rights abuse cases to the courts for civil remediation, but awards were difficult to collect. The government is required to undertake pretrial negotiations or mediation in an attempt to settle out of court. Plea bargains were rarely offered by the prosecution and even more rarely accepted by defendants. F. Arbitrary or unlawful interference with privacy family, home, or correspondence. Although the Constitution prohibits arbitrary or unlawful interference, the law gives broad powers of search and seizure to security personnel. The law allows warrantless searches of a person, vehicle, ship, or boat if a police officer has a Jamaica 8. Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 2020 United States Department of State Bureau of Democracy human rights, and labor. Reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. On occasion police were accused of conducting searches without warrants or reasonable suspicion. In the areas with ZOSOs and SOs, government security forces took biometrics from temporarily detained persons. The Office of the Public Defender and Civil Society challenged this practice, arguing that keeping the information and failing to delete it after police released the detained person effectively criminalized persons who subsequently were not charged. Security forces apprehended wide swaths of the population in ZOSOs and SOs under broad arrest authority. Section 2. Respect for civil liberties, including a. Freedom of expression, including for the press. The Constitution provides for freedom of expression, including for the press, and the government generally respected this right. An independent press, generally effective judicial protection, and a functioning democratic political system combined to promote freedom of expression, including for the press. Independent media were active and expressed a wide variety of views without restriction. Internet freedom the government did not restrict or disrupt access to the internet or censor online content, 
and there were no credible reports that the government monitored private online communications without appropriate legal authority. Academic Freedom and Cultural Events There were no government restrictions on academic freedom. The Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica barred certain lyrics and music videos, including songs referring to violent sex, violence against women, children, and other vulnerable persons, or questions of race. Such lyrics were expunged prior to broadcast. B. Freedoms of Peaceful Assembly and Association The Constitution provides for the freedoms of peaceful assembly and association, and the government generally respected these rights.